Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 12. MacKillop Old Collegian and Federal Member for Lawler, a member of the Australian Parliament, Joanne Ryan. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr Andrew Exton. Another episode of the Mac Connections podcast, and today we're with art teacher extraordinaire, Mr Silvio Manello. Silvio, thanks for coming on board. My initial question, my initial question to you is um, something that I'm quite naive about. How do you teach art remotely? Great question. I think uh, it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, the, the beauty of it is that you, with the, the technology available, you get to perhaps pre-record uh, some demonstrations of, say, skills that you'd like to instill in that particular task. Um, you might even use some of the technology to also uh, do like a live video feed where you get to showcase some of, you know, perhaps painting or drawing skills. Uh, but then all of the distractions, the, the time wasting, the ins and outs of the normal regular day in the classroom, they, they're all, they all evaporate and kids probably get like a real solid go at working on a task. So there's an advantage there. Um, but then the other drawback is the, the, the lack of materials for some students. So some kids have got like a, a nice setup at home and they've got lots of materials to work with. They can experiment. Whereas other kids, they might have just the basics. So that really hampers what they can actually achieve. If I go back to my memories of school, I wasn't good at art or graphics, but I saw it as a bit of a release from the, from the, the maths and the English. It was something different. It was something that enabled me to, to some degree, think, stop thinking about other things. Do you find um, that students are still drawn to doing the tasks and are interested in, in doing the tasks from a point of view of it just being a bit different than the work they're being asked to do in other subjects? Look, I think that uh, there are different categories of kids that we're teaching in the, in the class and it also depends on what class we're referring to. So if you've got a junior class or a middle years class where they're still um, sort of different groups of kids with different skill sets. So you've got the kids that are obsessed, they love art, they love graphic design, whatever it might be. And then there are others that are sort of at the opposite end of the spectrum. So they're picking it because they may be uh, interested still, but they would like to explore it. Um, and then there are kids at junior levels that, well, obviously they don't have a choice. So that then impacts, I mean, um, there's still heaps of theory. So especially with all the junior and middle years, we're introducing a subject from scratch at the start of this term. So we don't just say, here's the drawing or here's the painting, go ahead and do it. There's a lot of background stuff that we have to cover first. So they might assume that it's gonna be a release for to a certain extent, but there's still a lot of sort of groundwork that you have to do in preparation for them to do a drawing or to do a task that is that is purely practical. So, uh, sorry. No, no, I was going to say, um, has that been more of a challenge for senior students in terms of, you know, the immediacy of completing a task or the, the nature of the folios that students are asked to do? Is that, is it, has it been more of a ch is challenge for those students? It's a challenge because I, <laughs> there are certain subjects where, like, their natural intelligence 
can actually uh, afford them to perhaps not try as hard and but still get still, the result yeah and still get a really high result whereas a drawing a painting a page in a folio it's not only a combination of the skill and the intellect but also like it just takes time to do so yep. there's no escape like a good piece of work in our subjects also ties in with a lot of time and dedication that you can't afford to sort of cut corners with yeah, I mean, there's a, I think for the people that are naive to art, there's almost a feeling that it's always spontaneous and always just flows out of the hand. And obviously, the more you understand it, the harder it is and the more planning that's required to complete any good piece of work. That is correct. And if you couple with that, that a lot of people that have like a creative side normally have to feel some sort of inspiration as well. And the fact that we've been inside for so long and that some people are experiencing, you know, the the trials and tribulations mentally with that, that can also be quite hard that we're, these kids are, are sometimes, you know, urged to, to complete, you know, this many pages or this many paintings yep. or this many whatever it might be. And, you know, the, the emotional uh, input also dictates the, the, yeah, well, the approach and also the quality that comes out at the end. Yep. I was going to ask you a, a couple of questions, one related to art from a personal point of view, but we're trying to get insights to how everyone's experiencing this. If I was to ask you what's been the challenges for you around this period of remote living and remote learning, but what's one thing that you feel like you might have gained that, you've, that you mightn't have realised that has been maybe a benefit of having this period? Look, the benefit, I think, is that we're all urged to be proactive and creative and that any sort of interaction with our students depends on our response. Like, we can't... We, we have to be an active participant, so we can't sort of do the job half-hearted. Uh, I think that to learn things as we've gone along has also been beneficial. So whether we face this situation again, we've got like a whole kit bag of skills that we've had to develop on the fly. Um, and that's that's been really good because sometimes we fall into the trap of just sort of rolling the arm over, not pushing ourselves to learn anything new, whereas this has really forced us to do that. Um, and, and challenge? Look, a challenge has been um, the, the the hours. So normally when, you know, a, wor a working week when we're back on site is, you know, you get there at a certain time, you teach for a certain time, you leave, and then when you go home, it's you're away from work. You can turn the laptop off and then that's it. Um, whereas... I think that the notion of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's all gone. The weekend is sort of, you, you're still doing work. You know, um, my wife is obviously a teacher at MacKillop as well. So we're both like in separate offices and we're doing work till all sorts of hours. And it's not because uh, some of it's actually just been trying to be proactive and set up lessons ahead and others uh, just, you know, take taking care of the day-to-day -day admin kind of stuff, just responding to emails and things like that. Um, last question, Silvio. Um, you're an artist in your own right and you're a creator of a whole lot of different things, portraits and a whole lot of different types of artwork and it's part of your DNA whether you teach it or not. I'm wondering, have you been drawn to art more through this period for your own sense of making sense of it or coping with the time that you have? Has it been something that you've been able to do more of or you've been drawn to do more of because of it's a way of, I suppose, helping you get through the day and helping you sort of make sense of everything that's happening? I think in remote learning one, I was probably more prolific than I have been in, in a long, long time. So I was actually very inspired 
uh, churning out lots of work and had a real goal in mind of trying to be creative personally in conjunction with the professional life. So teaching on one hand, doing my own stuff, trying to avoid maybe watching the TV and, and sort of um, wasting time whenever I had downtime. But I think that since we've gone back into the, the, the harsher lockdown, it's been uh, a little trickier. Uh, I'll probably slow down a lot with my own personal work. So, um, yeah, it's, it's fluctuated. But I'm trying to get back into it again. Did you work... Was that a representation of what was happening or the or what we're in at the moment, or is it completely separate to that and different to that? It was completely um, unrelated. So it was, uh, look, it was a, a project that I'd um, fell into at the start of the year. And then when we got all sent home at the end of March, it was something that I then had the the luxury of being able to dedicate a lot more time to it. So it just happened to be a coincidence, the timing and, and what was happening at that time. And um, last question, how do you think you'll look back on this period in five years' time when we're going to the footy and Melbourne Victory's losing to Melbourne City and all that <laughs> sort of stuff? What, what do you think your reflection could be? Well, my reflection would be... The, the I just still look at it today and um, am bemused and fascinated by human behaviour. So everything has been turned on its head and we're sort of forced to think about like what life means, what's important to us all, what's important to, you know, in our jobs as teachers, um, how we interact with a person next door or in our classroom or on the other side of the planet. So I just find, you know, even though the, the circumstances are so extreme, does it still force us to change our mindset or do we just sort of carry on? Uh, I, I like to think and look at how society functions. So that's my big takeaway. And I know that I'll, think of life differently and what's what what are the most important things in life but and, um, the, yep sorry sir no like, whether the average person whether the the general population feel the same way that's another thing to it remains to be seen well so one of the things that i hope we're doing by this is just enabling each other to connect and listen and speak which is similar to what we get an opportunity to do at school but not necessarily take it up all of the time so i do thank you for um sharing an insight and um, look, if we, can, if we can focus on the positives out of what might seem on the face of it a reasonably negative situation, we could in hindsight look at this as being a benefit and not just a cost. So thanks for coming on this little podcast and um, I wish you and, and your family and your wife all the best and um, look forward to seeing you soon back on site, so to speak. Andrew, it's been a pleasure and I wish you all the same for your family and, and all the people within our McKillop community. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.